know, fire is, um, for most people, when they see it, it's most often seen as a destructive force that will obviously impact the environment in a negative way. I mean, oftentimes people's possessions are destroyed, their lives are turned upside down. And sadly, at times, there's even a loss of life. So the destructive nature of fire can be devastating. It consumes what it touches. The fire of this candle consumes that wax. In the gospel today, we just heard Jesus say to his disciples, I have come to set the earth on fire. And how I wish it were already blazing. But fire may not always leave the world or the environment in destruction. I haven't seen it too much around here in Michigan, but when I was in South Dakota, in the springtime, I could be driving down the interstate or one of the state highways and, and see where the ground along the ditches or perhaps the fields had been burned. These ditches and these fields were not, were not started by, the fire was not started by accident, but it was started purposely. Because through this burning, everything is consumed but the ashes, all the nutrients are returned to the soil. So when we think of it in this sense, fire can be very transforming. And perhaps this is what Jesus is talking about in the gospel today. It was not meant to be devastating, yet it was some to others because the preaching of Jesus was rejected by many. It was accepted by some. It caused division, which he said it would. You know, one of my favorite images that comes from the Old Testament scriptures is one of refining silver. So the silversmith must put, a, put the silver. Have you ever seen a piece of pure silver? It's pretty dark, isn't it? Pretty black, right? So the silversmith puts, all, puts the silver with all its impurities in this hot fire in order for it to take on the look that we might see in a finished product, such as a spoon, right? You look into the spoon, you can see your image, right? It wasn't always that way. The hotter the fire, the more the silver is purified. Each time it's put into the fire, more dross or more impurities are removed, and the image that's revealed becomes truer and truer and truer and more perfected. As we enter into this life of Jesus, this, the dross of our own lives is burned away, consuming what is negative within us. This happens through our daily intimate prayer with Jesus, through the sacramental encounters with Jesus, in the, in, you know, this, through the encounters in the sacramental life of the church, in particular the Eucharist and the sacrament of penance. And then we are then given this greater zeal to go out and set the world on fire. You know, St. Catherine of Siena said, if you are who you are called to be, you will set the world on fire. How many of you are setting the world on fire by your life of faith? Nobody? Really? Then you're not living the life you have been called to. And this is precisely what Jesus is inviting us into, right? And, to, and gives us this greater zeal for the gospel and the mission of the church to which we have all been called through baptism. I have come to set the earth on fire and how I wish it were already ablazing. This fire is to be seen as Christ's own passion of love. A fire that is to be handed on this is a fire that makes all things bright and pure and free. Are you all free? Are we free? Are our hearts pure, free? Being a Christian is daring to entrust oneself to this burning fire. To entrust oneself to this burning fire happens when you and I enter into this personal daily relationship with Jesus in a very intentional way. In those quiet daily periods of prayer, his love, his desire for us. You know, you're here at Mass this morning not because it's an obligation. You're here at Mass this morning because Jesus desires you. 
And somehow you have answered this desire of his own heart. You probably didn't think about that when you came in the front door this morning, but that's the reality. That's reality. So in this time of prayer, his love purifies our hearts, our desires, our own agendas, our own attitudes. You cannot, you and I cannot love as Jesus loves. We cannot and will not freely lay down our lives for him and his mission until, until we give ourselves to this purifying process. And we call that conversion. Conversion happens because the Lord converts our hearts. It's not something that we do. All we do is say, yes, Lord, convert me to be like you. I want to live your life in this world. We will not do it. We're too weak. We're too worldly. The secular culture has a hold on us in so many ways, and in, in, in many ways has become our idol. We cannot and will not fully answer our call to discipleship unless we allow Jesus to purify our hearts, our minds, our spirits. You know, there's a wonderful painting in the church of San Luigi dei Francesi in Rome. And in this picture, this, or in this church, there's this big it's Caravaggio's calling of St. Matthew. And, and this is kind of describes kind of what Jesus is really about. You know, Caravaggio uses a medium of light and darkness to convey his powerful messages. So in this painting, Jesus with Peter is just outside the door of the room where Matthew, who was a tax collector, right? It was where Matthew is counting all of his money like a, you know, like a, a gambler counting his winnings. And the door opens and the intrusion of Jesus startles Matthew. And Jesus gestures to Matthew. And Matthew points one hand at himself as this to say me, but he has his other hand on all the money. What seems to me to be significant about all this is the light that Caravaggio uses. The light is coming off Jesus when the door is open and is shining, it's shining directly in Matthew's face. Perhaps the fire that Jesus had in mind was an invitation to follow, an invitation for Matthew into the light, an invitation to the very heart of Jesus, as St. Ignatius would say, a heart inflamed with a love so strong, so strong that nothing could put it out. I have come to cast a fire on the earth and how I wish it were blazing in the hearts of every one of us. In this painting, Matthew is being confronted by the burning fire of Christ's word that says, come, come and follow me just as you are. This light was penetrating like a fire, a fire of love coming from the heart of Jesus, ablaze with mercy and hope and resurrected life. How many of us want that? That's only like a fourth of you. Really? Really? You are invited into the center of the fire, you and I, into the center of the heart of Jesus where his purifying love is there to burn away, to purify, to transform all of those attitudes and desires that keep us from experiencing resurrected life in this life, that keep us from following Jesus wherever he leads us day by day, week by week, moment by moment. To live profoundly in his love, surrendering is, it all is, as we know, countercultural. It's difficult and it says to the world, we do not desire worldly things or power, we desire heaven. This may cause strained relationship and, and division, as Jesus has warned us. But the love of God compels us to choose who will be first in our lives and to place any relationship or anything else above God is a form of idolatry. Now, Luke is writing to a church that's suffering persecution. Many people are being killed, martyred for their faith in Jesus Christ. And all that Jesus had predicted about division is starting to come true. 
people could have been comforted by the fact that they were suffering, that their suffering was anticipated by Jesus himself. They experienced that what he told them was true. The vision would happen because of him. So in today's message, in this message from Jesus today, there's really a sense of, I don't know if you've heard, if you heard it, but there's a sense of urgency. He challenges us to examine who we love first and foremost. A true disciple loves God above all else and is willing, willing for, to forsake it all for Jesus, even if we are rejected by our loved ones, even if it brings division in our families. I'm not gonna share the story with you, but I have that personal experience in my own life from family members who hate the church and hate what I stand for. But that's okay. It's a form of daily martyrdom within the world today. We just pray for them, right? Lift them up in prayer and ask the Lord to convert their hearts with the fire of his love. So all of us, we should be praying for a deepening of the fire of the Holy Spirit in our lives so that the Lord may renew us and then you and I can go out and renew the face of the earth. Unless we are fully plugged into Christ and his grace, unless we constantly feed our souls with his words, unless everything we do flows out of our relationship with him, then none of our actions, as good as they might be, can have lasting value. They can have value, but they won't have lasting value. Only lasting value will give peace to our hearts. So as we gather today around this altar in this Eucharist, we are reminded of Christ's mercy and the fire of his love that was fully inflamed on the cross. He has come to set our hearts on fire and how he wishes they were already ablazing. He is waiting for us to respond so that he can bring us out of our slumber and out of this consuming culture into the burning fire of his kingdom. Amen.